welcome to the Word for Family. My name is Pastor Bill. I want to welcome you here on this special Youth Sunday where we are celebrating those who are graduating. And most particularly, we are celebrating one Luke Yelberton, who is our resident senior. And uh, you may, I, I wonder how many people know, where is Luke going to college? Uh, Baylor? <laughs> it's, isn't that obvious, right? Hey, I even dug out of my laundry Baylor Green to wear today. How about that? I've never been there. I can't afford it, but I, I support you all the way. This, this is awesome. Well, welcome this morning. We want you to feel at home. There's some coffee available in the back, and we are here to celebrate today. I was thinking this week, there's a, a you know, especially with graduation coming up, you, you, if, if you experience this in high school, you're thinking, man, there's no way I'll make it through finals. This is impossible. Uh, and then problems get bigger after you graduate. You, you, you want to be a, a, a good employee, and, and it looks like it's impossible. You want to be a good boss, and, and sometimes it just feels impossible. You want to be a good spouse or a good partner, and sometimes that's just impossible. And the disciples were talking to Jesus about how hard it is to live holy, how hard it is to live this Christian life. But here's what Jesus says back to them. Jesus looked at them and said, With human beings, this is impossible. But with God... All things are possible. That's what we're here to celebrate this morning. If you believe that, you know what I'm talking about. If you're not sure, let's talk about it. But with God, all things are possible. So let's stand and celebrate this morning. Well, good morning, Word Servant. Yes, it is a wonderful morning to celebrate. We're so proud of not just Luke, but all, all of the students who are wrapping up what I imagine was a stressful year for everybody. But this morning, I mean, Pastor Bill is totally right. You know, nothing is impossible. So this might be a song that's maybe familiar, maybe you've heard on the radio once, but I just want to go over the words just real quick. Can we put the, the chorus of this up on the screen real quick? So through you, I can do anything. I can do all things because it's you who gives me strength. And the next slide is through you, blind eyes are open, strongholds are broken. I am living by faith. And that's what we're celebrating this morning, that we are walking into not just our graduates, but all of us, walking into the unknown every single day. But through his strength, nothing is impossible. So even if we don't know the song, it's the truth that we can celebrate. Amen? Amen. 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 I like you, Benjamin. Wait for it. <laughs> are we? Uh, oh, are we? We said are we. <laughs> well, even if you're at home in your pajamas, it's still something that we can celebrate. So thank you so much. You guys ready?
stands today under your blood, under your cross, under your salvation. And we can stand here this morning as living people that nothing is impossible for you. I know everybody bears their story. Many people will never know the story of the person sitting next to you, but I can tell you that I am standing here because of miracles. And my family is here because of miracles. How we just give thanks to you. We give thanks to you. We let our faith rise to you in song and shout and celebration. You are because of what you have done, your mighty hand, your mighty works in our lives. We just give you thanks. We just thank you this morning. We each have at least one thing. I guarantee you it's hundreds and hundreds of things. But God, we just give you thanks. We worship you. We celebrate who you are. You are a provider. You are a refuge. You are a healer. You provide a friend closer than a brother. Your spirit strengthens us, comforts us, empowers us, emboldens us, heals us. So God, we celebrate that great joy this
you're celebrating the seniors. Now, you may be thinking, does that mean 65 and older? Sure. <laughs> we can celebrate you too. Not really. We're here to celebrate those who are graduating this morning. And uh, we have one senior in high school that's graduating. His name is Luke Yelberton. And uh, so the first announcement that I have today is, I'm not preaching. I knew I would draw a response. I knew I would Woo-hoo, yes. So, but Luke is. That is the truth. I thought I had to warm it up. And yet, you get it. You get it. And it's going to be good. I've seen the notes. I've seen the slides. It's going to be great. Because, well, I'll say that for later. Let's cover the admin first. So, uh, here's the admin. We're going to throw up a QR code. What you can do is snap that picture with your phone, and it will take you directly to a uh, connection card that lets us know that you're here. Why would you want to fill out a connection card? Well, one, it lets us know that you're here so that we can say, hey, thanks for coming. And it also gives you an opportunity to fill out a prayer request. We have a team of people that would love to pray for you. So if you have a prayer request, you can type it right in there. And this team of people does amazing things through prayer. Uh, I could go on all day about some of the things that have happened through prayer in this church. If you want to know more, talk to me afterwards. But anyway, that's the start. That's how it all begins. Uh, We also talked about giving here, so uh, time, talent, and treasure. I'm not just talking money here. I'm talking about what did God pour into you? How did God make you? And how can you give back? Because if you give the way that God wired you, you will never be more alive. You will never have more of a connection and sense of purpose than you do in that moment. So we encourage you to find that, whatever that is for you. Plug in and help us uh, help us build the kingdom of God. Help us make Jesus famous in this year. Uh, we also have the ability to give to us financially. If you would like to do that, wordserve.org slash give. And uh, we will make sure we're good stewards of whatever we're given. By way of announcements today, today is a, a really unique day. It's the highs and the lows and, and everything in between. Uh, but right after this meeting, or right after this meeting, Right after this spectacular worship service, uh, we're going to have a meeting, that's what I meant to say, uh, for anybody who is a parent of kids, or to kids, to talk about the way forward, what we can expect, and how we're going to conduct ourselves going forward, because this is the part that kills me. This is Barbara's last Sunday with us. I know, right? Ugh, I hate that. But there's a picture right over here with a map on it. If you would like to sign that, there's a pin. Uh, it was shall forever be her medical seal after today, so this is your last chance to get your ink on paper. Uh, uh, and even if you don't get ink on paper, at least talk to Barbara uh, on the way out and uh, let her know what a blessing that she's been to us. So, if you're the parent of a Wurzer kid, we ask you to stay after service for just a brief moment and we'll talk about what's the way ahead for Wurzer kids. Alright, the other thing, tonight, youth if you are a youth, that would be grade 6 through 12, or if you're about to be in 6th grade, or if you just think like a 6th grader, come on out tonight and enjoy the youth celebration. It's going to, it's going to be backyard Olympics. We're not sure if it's going to include swimming or not. Uh, that depends on the weather. But rain or shine, we're going to have a heck of a party tonight. Liz Boggs and her community group and Jim uh, have put together a wonderful time tonight. There's free food. There's fun. There's gift cards to be won. Uh, we want you all to come out and enjoy this end of year celebration, and uh, Jimmy's going to be with us tonight. Uh, I was looking like he should be right there, but he's, he's getting caffeine. He's got his priorities right. Um, and we want you to, to get a chance to meet him, and uh, he's going to be our staff person for youth uh, extraordinaire starting this summer and next fall. So we're super excited about that. And uh, so just come out, enjoy it, and, and see what it's all about. The other announcement that I know will be met with much rejoicing based on poll results but you can't guess what I'm going to say. 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock worship time, yes. <laughs> Man, that, you didn't even hesitate. Man, that, that was on your tip of your tongue. So starting in June, uh, June 5th, we will be starting worship time at 10 a.m. instead of 9 a.m. That's that extra hour of sleep. So I expect you all now to, to come caffeinated, rejoicing with breath in your lungs and voices that can respond when Jimmy says, are you out there this morning? I expect a rousing rendition of yes, we are. So whatever that looks like for you, uh, 10 o'clock starting June 5th, and we're super excited about that. All right, we are also a praying church. Uh, I want to lift up a couple of prayers, and uh, I don't typically lift up prayer requests off of the prayer team because some people value confidentiality, but uh, if you ever need that confidentiality, know that if you share something with me, I expect that it will be confidential unless you tell me otherwise. 
So uh, I just want to say that before we start, in case you're worried, like, I don't want to tell Bill anything because it'll be on YouTube the next thing you know. <laughs> All right, I'll tell it long, unless you want it to be. All right, let's go into a time of prayer. Yeah, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for breath in our lungs. We thank you for strength in our limbs. Yeah, we pray that you would help us to find a way to use that to build your kingdom. Yeah, we also uh, lift up all those who are graduating, who are moving on to the next phase of life with all the excitement and yet all the uncertainties that go with that. God, we uh, who have been there know what that's like, but maybe we forget sometimes how, how uh, emotion-filled that can be and exciting and scary all at the same time. It can help us to know that you are a God who leads. You are a God who shows us the path to walk. And so I pray, God, that no matter what stage of life we're in, whether we're graduating school, whether we're graduating a job, whether we're graduating into retirement, whatever it is that we're moving on to, that we would move in the way that you show us. God, do that in a way that we can recognize. We, we realize that we don't always hear your voice. We don't always see the path ahead. But we do know this. You are a faithful God. You are a God who desires us to follow your way. And you will leave clues. You will... Give us encouragement through friends, through scripture, through various means. As we pray, we pray that we would hear that still small voice, that we would know the way to walk. God, you made that abundantly clear. Forgive us when we stray and bring us back into that path of grace, the grace that you've already provided for us. God, as we prepare to hear the word this morning, I pray for Luke, that you would speak through him, that you would move all of Luke out of the way so that we can see pure Christ in Luke's life. And God, I thank you for a congregation that has been here and has supported Luke from kindergarten until this point and will continue to support him. God, it is this type of community that brings the fruit of discipleship. So God, help us to celebrate that this morning in the midst of all of this. God, I pray for those who are hurting, those who are suffering, those who have suffered setbacks medically or setbacks through accidents. God, lift them up and heal them. Let them know that you are a God who notices everything. There is nothing that escapes your care, your notice, and your strength. So God, give us strength for this day. Give us eyes to see you. And give us hearts to love you. And give us hands and feet to serve you. So that the world may know who you are. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, this morning, like I said, it's a special treat. We have Luke Yelverton coming to join us. Luke, I'm going to invite you on up. And uh, I went to the open house yesterday, and I noticed two things. One, there were a lot of people that were younger than me. And two, everybody that was younger than me was taller than me. <laughs> I remember, anyway, I'm not going to go there. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Luke is a special case uh, for Wurzer because he started here when he was in kindergarten. He has now graduated senior high school. And uh, I, I asked him about it. I asked him if he would be willing to share what it was like growing up in, in the Word Serve environment. Because if you're not familiar with what we're all about, we're all about teaching and preaching the Word, and we're all about serving the world, and we never want to separate those two things. That's why we mash Word and Serve together. So I asked Luke if he could share with us his story. What was it like to grow up in a place that teaches and preaches the Word and serves the world, with the added bonus that his mom, Erica, is our director of Compassion, which is all about serving. And, and Chad is uh, instrumental in so many ways, has served in leadership in this church, and has been here basically from the beginning, uh, BB, before Bill, right? <laughs> uh, so we are super excited to hear what Luke has to share with us today. And uh, like I told him two things this morning. One is, you're with family, so just relax and enjoy this moment. It only, I hope you only graduate high school once. <laughs> and the other thing is, if he messes up, He's the only one in the house. So just keep on going and have fun with it, all right? Thank you, brother. We love you. Enjoy. Hi, my name is Luke Gilberton, and I want to thank Pastor Bill for giving me a chance to speak today. For those of you that don't know my story, my first Sunday at WordServe was the Sunday before I started kindergarten at Huggins Elementary, where WordServe was meeting at the time. If you can't tell, I'm not going to kindergarten anymore. <laughs> in fact, just a few days ago, on May 18th, I graduated from Fulcher High School. I'm honored to speak today because this church has literally helped raise me up. Beyond anything else I have to say today, 
I want you all to know how eternally grateful I am for that. My talk today is titled, Word Served by the Numbers. I'm off to Baylor University in the fall, where I'll be majoring in engineering. So when Pastor Bill asked me to reflect on how church has shaped my life, my brain started to run through some of the numbers, because that's just how I think. So, I did the math. Um, with all the Sundays from kindergarten through graduation, between Word Serve Kids, Word Serve Youth, the people of this church have poured over 700 hours into my discipleship. Let that number sink in for a moment. 700 hours. Proverbs 22.6 says, Train up a child in the way that they should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. I stand here today still pursuing a relationship with Jesus, in great part because for over 700 hours, the people of this church volunteered their time to teach me about God, His Word, and His love for me. I've always been blessed to be a part of many youth events with other full Street churches throughout the years. The fact that total strangers would welcome me in and devote their time to helping me develop my faith is both humbling and inspiring. All of it has shaped who I am. One specific memory that has really stuck with me is my confirmation retreat in seventh grade. It was there that I began to understand true friendship. Up until that point, I thought I had to prove myself to have friends, but the volunteer leaders of that retreat helped me understand that my true self is rooted in Christ and that God wanted friends for me that respected me for who I am and friends that pointed me back to him. Understanding this truth became more and more important throughout my junior high and high school years, and honestly, I wouldn't have survived high school without it. I'm so thankful for all the adults willing to play a role in my understanding of my faith. There we go. Okay. We are not just word, we are word serve. And serve is something that this church does really well. Here are some of the numbers for you to think about. From kindergarten to graduation, I have witnessed more than 20,000 bags of food packed for elementary kids. Four houses in this community completely rebuilt for families that were in desperate need. Thousands of shoe boxes for Operation Christmas Child sent around the world. The church, this church responded to three major hurricanes along the Gulf Coast, multiple floods, and one snow apocalypse. Um, <laughs> dozens of serve Saturdays meeting a whole lot of different needs in the community. And I really could keep going for a long time. I've been a witness and a participant in serving in ways that have changed me forever. The people of this church helped me learn how to swing a hammer, run a drill, lay sod, paint a house, insulate walls, muck a house, and build a wheelchair ramp, to name a few. Uh, all in Jesus' name and for his glory. And yet my favorite phrase that I've heard all these years serving at Word Serve is, it's not about the house. It was never just about fixing up the house or packing the food. This church helped me see and pass just the physical needs of others and learn that it's just as important, if not more, to show love and appreciation and to share the word of God to those who are serving. It has always been about relationship. There are so many stories I can tell about my experiences serving with Word Serve, but we'd run out of time. I do want to share at least one. Some of you may remember Mr. Joe Wilkes. Mr. Joe cared for his wife, Ida, who was very sick and could no longer get out of bed on her own. And Mr. Joe had a hard time keeping up with the house, cleaning, and repair. WordServe had several work days at Mr. Joe's house. We helped clean and fix up his house so he could focus on taking care of Miss Ida. It was a lot of work. But what I remember the most was the times my dad would take my brother and I there to just visit. My dad and Joe would sit and talk on Joe's porch while Samuel and I would sit on the porch swinging with all of his dogs. <laughs> Mr. Joe had a lot of chihuahuas. <laughs> Mr. Joe even tried to give us a couple. My mom said no. <laughs> and that's Mr. Joe with one of his chihuahuas back there. Um, I don't know what all Joe and my dad talked about on these days, but I can tell it meant, meant a lot to Mr. Joe when we were all there. In so many ways, these last 13 years, just like with Mr. Joe, I witnessed firsthand that serving the way Jesus calls us to is about relationship. It's not about the house. 
chapter 2 of the book of James, it basically says faith without works is dead. The people of this church have shaped my life by showing me what a living faith looks like, and I'm so thankful. Lastly, I want to talk about how the prayers of this church have shaped my life. The numbers on this one are beyond my calculation. <laughs> As I look around this morning, I know that most of you sitting in this room have prayed for me regularly throughout my childhood. Whether it was school stuff, or friendship issues, or my relationship with my family, or my band competitions, through both the fun and the hard, I know you were faithful in prayer. Whether it was the church prayer team, or my youth leader, or family friends, or some group that calls themselves the Bible study babes. <laughs> I know I was being prayed for, and it made all the difference. Jesus says in Mark 11, 24, Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. Your prayers were answered again and again in my life, and I'm different because of it. Thank you, it's not enough. So as I move to the next chapter of my life, I want you to know how thankful I am for all of the ways you have invested in me. The care, the love, the support means more than I could ever put into words. But I also want to leave you with this challenge. For the adults in the room, just keep showing up. Don't grow weary. You are changing lives. I'm standing here as a witness that when you serve, it matters. Serve with kids, chaperone the youth retreat, join the prayer team, host a swim party, bring dinner to youth, find a way that makes sense for you. But keep going, keep investing in the next generation. What you are doing matters more than you will ever know, and I'm proof of that. And for the kids in the room, I offer you the same challenge. Just keep showing up. <laughs> Come to church, make time for youth group, sign up for the retreats, the serve projects. You won't regret it. Read your Bible and listen to those friends around you who are pointing you back to God. And be that kind of friend. When times get hard, because they definitely will, turn to God's promises contained in his book. Often in my life, I have turned to Romans 8 to 8, which says, In all things, God works for the good of those who love him. These last 13 years, I've had really great days, and at times really hard days, but as I reflect on all of them, I can testify that God has kept his promise and worked it all out for my good. Thank you again for letting me speak this morning and be such an important part of my life.
wants to reflect on that love that God has for you. No matter where you are, no matter where you've been, think about what you can do right now. And you just surrender it and follow the one who made you, the one who knit you in your mother's womb, the one who breathed breath into your lungs. As we go forward in worship, contemplate on that. At the end of service, I'm going to call Luke back up and speak a blessing over him. I would invite any family members or people who are close to Luke to <clears throat> say that because probably the whole church would come up. But if that's the case, then you're great. Everybody come up, surround Luke in love, and we'll send him out in a way deserving of the work that Christ has done here. Let's continue to worship. story to hear at the beginning of and see where it becomes one year, two years, five years, ten years down the road. What a beautiful thing. And Luke is one of many people who I'm sure this church has touched an impact. I see him nodding in the back, so I he definitely agree with him. There were a number of songs that I know were new. Well, he knew for you guys, but just the words of what we were singing about this morning I felt tied so well with what we were doing. They just had to be there. It's just right. So if it's something you didn't know or if it's a song maybe a different style and not your favorite thing to listen to, I encourage you to dig deeper into what we're singing about and how we're singing it this morning. Because the words of this next song are exactly what I would tell my friends to walk forward with it. This is all I need. It's all I want. It's all I see. And without it, there is no meaning. The air I breathe, the song I sing, the love I need. That's what life is. That's what we need to be teaching. As we sing this morning in church, as we sing at home, let's just seek His presence this morning. Let's set an example of seeking His presence. Amen. Amen.
us for just a moment so that we can do a, a special thing today. I'm going to invite Luke forward, and then if Luke's family would like to come and join him, uh, why don't we join on the stairs so that we don't have to interfere with all the wonderful decorations. And as they're making their way up, I'm going to grab a couple things that we laid in ambush. <laughs> yeah, the element of surprise is the oh. gone, all right? Hey, y'all, we have a whole bunch of people. Yeah. This, yeah, this is going to be a, uh, a picture worthy moment. Maybe a couple of rows up on the stage. Yeah, we got stairs. You can use them. Yeah. Okay. Don't I'm going to stand up here, so I'm probably taller than Luke. <laughs> but that's my only deal. I just got it. <laughs> all right, so as we're gathering around, I do want to unveil something that uh, is a blast from the past. Those of you, he talked about his confirmation retreat. Uh, these are footprints from all the people who are on that confirmation retreat as youth. And so we're going to uh, grant this to the family or to Luke. You probably want to hang this up in your dorm room, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Double out the, area. <laughs> <laughs> these are the footprints of all those kids who went on that junior high confirmation retreat. And uh, to my knowledge, many of them are still walking in the way that the Lord points. So this is a point of reminder words heard, of the things that you do when we ask people to serve, whether that's coming out for that youth thing, providing a meal for youth, uh, serving in the community, this is why we do what we do, because that next generation is walking in a way that is pleasing to God and will be good for this world. So that's number one. Number two, because it's never just about one, it's two for day of words heard. I'm just going to hand this to you right over the top here. There you go. You can open that now or you can open it at your leisure, but it's uh, the, the, the compass that points to true north. And so what I want to tell Luke on uh, your way out the, the words or the door here is that you're going to leave this place with all this wonderful support, uh, at least physically, but you're not leaving. We're not sending you away. We're sending you out. And there's a big difference because we send apostles out. We send heathens away. <laughs> We're sending an apostle out into the world where he can be a reflection of everything that you've taught him here, everything that the Holy Spirit will guide him as he continues to go. You're going to hear a lot of things. You're going to be exposed to a lot of things that you've never seen or heard before. But I do know this. There is a God who points the way. And he will always point the way back home when you seek him with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And you trust that he knows the way that you, he wants you to go in. So seek and trust, and you will always find your way home. That's my blessing to you. Let's say this blessing over Luke. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you peace forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Lord, sure go in the grace of God as apostles sent out into the world with the best news of all. Share it with the breath in your lungs and shout it to the world. Thank you for coming today, and I would encourage you to come by and say hello and congratulations to Luke. And Miss Barbara is going to have a parent meeting right over here in the corner as soon as that all settles down. So thank you for coming, and we'll see you next time.